Okay. Um, hello, everybody. I think we can start, right? Um, yeah, welcome to the um, busy RCP developer's guide to Eclipse Theo. Um, I am Alex Tugarev. I'm with Typefox, and Typefox is the company who, together with Ericsson, started the development of FIA uh, about one and a half year ago. And currently we are really excited about the development, how fast things are moving. Uh, we are an Eclipse project now, and um, uh, many new parties are joining, like Red Hat and ARM. And it's really nice to see how much interest uh, is uh, yeah, appearing um, for um, FIA. FIA is a framework to create um, IDE-like applications. So those can run in, um, in the cloud or also on the desktop. Um, we are using modern web technologies to create that and we support many languages by leveraging the language server protocol. And also, which um, a, a feature which um, landed just a um, couple of months ago, that's the support for the debug adapter protocol, which means that we can then integrate with debuggers. Currently, we support the node debugger. Yeah, and I like to show you the FIA application side by side to what you probably all of you know that's the Eclipse IDE and to point to some um, similarities and some differences. So here we have a, an example of a FIA application which is actually running on the desktop and yeah, the, um, what you see is first of all the application shell and it's quite comparable to what you know from Eclipse, it's called Workbench. Um, both have flexible um, layouts. Uh, that means you can arrange uh, views, parts, widgets, um, put them via drag and drop into folders. Um, what the Workbench has in one is a uh, feature called Perspectives that could be eventually implemented also for the um, application shell in FIA, but that's nothing we currently have. So let's have a closer look at the navigator. So in, um, in FIA, we show the file system actually, while in uh, Eclipse, it's the projects which we are looking at, at the root level. Um, Besides that, you, you can see that uh, um, we are in, um, we're integrating Git status and Git features into the status bar, while such um, and similar functionalities are uh, included in, into labels and um, in context menus in Eclipse. So let's have a look at the editors. Both provides with rich um, language services and um, features. But, for instance, in Eclipse, you get used to install new plugins to provide support for uh, another language, which also means that you add another editor widget. And in, in FIA, it's always the same code widget, but through the language server protocol that's connecting to the uh, proper language server in order to provide you with that language support. And we are using um, TextMate grammar to highlight um, the syntax. That's, that looks awesome. And by the way, you have the very same experience than in the web. Mm. So if you open the outline, for instance, in, in FIA or in uh, Eclipse, it looks quite similar. So for FIA, there are predefined regions in the application shell to to the left and to the right and at the bottom. So you can drag widgets there and configure them to be shown there and you can uh, collapse them and expand. And similar things you can also achieve in, uh, in Eclipse by minimizing tab folders, right? 
So here's another example of the uh, bottom panel, which can also be toggled in, in the FIA application shell. And what you probably uh, are missing at the picture in, uh, in FIA is this uh, toolbar, which provides you with a lot of commands. So in FIA, we, are, we got used to use the uh, command palette to access all the commands available. You can quickly search by start typing for them. But in Eclipse, there's also something similar. Uh, if you don't know that, it's uh, available through the command uh, and three shortcut on Mac. It's called Quick Access and provides pretty much the same functionality. So the shortcut is F1 for, for FIA. And yeah, coming to preferences, they're quite different actually. So on the Eclipse side, you got used to use this form um, and uh, form-based uh, yeah, editors for, uh, for preferences, and maybe even wizards to configure something. And in the case of FIA, it's basically just a JSON file called settings.json. But there's also a tree, a really nice tree widget for that now, so that you can quickly search, just by start typing, search for some uh, configuration settings, and then enter or change defaults. One, um, one difference is also that in FIA you have user and workspace specific settings, which means you can have custom and personalized settings on your machine but also per project settings, which can override the user settings. Right. Um, let's come to FIA widgets, that the parts which you can drag and drop uh, inside the application shell, and which are quite comparable to what you know from, from Eclipse, the parts or editors and views. Um, so in case of Eclipse, it's, you know, Typically, it's SWT, which is used for rendering. And the JFace is providing the MVC um, framework functionality for designing wizards and editors and such. But on, on the here side, it's a plain um, HTML element, actually. So there is no limitation and no uh, restriction what to use to render contents of widgets which means we can actually support everything. Um, React is introduced to create widgets of the FIA core. And um, beside that, we are using the Phosphor.js library, which brings us all the life cycle to these, uh, to these widgets. And by life cycle, I really mean that if a uh, widget is going to be updated or, or focused, you want to react on that, do you have hooks and can implement them? And now I want to give you a short demo and, and, and show you quickly uh, an example application with FIA. Hang on. So just increase font size a bit. I hope you can read it. If not, please say. Um, so this is FIA the file navigator. In case of the browser, uh, version of the fee application, you don't have native, um, sorry, uh, native uh, menus, but we assimilate them by also using the um, um, Phosphor library. Um, so we have the files navigator, we can create new files, new folders and such. We can um, look up um, for uh, commands we want to execute and we can even search for files by using um, the, um, yeah, the search widget. Um, let's open some TypeScript source code. Um, that's a test code and um, that provides us with hover support, with nice syntax highlighting, and we can follow references, jump, and uh, navigate through code. That's really nice. So what we also have is um, uh, Git support, um, which means that uh, we can easily um, uh, add some uh, changes here and provide some commits like uh, adding task, commit that, and 
it will appear also in the uh, Git history view. We can review the changes of a commit. Yeah. Going through some other two to show how the diff editor looks like. And by the way, this is all the Monaco um, editor component, which is also uh, part of VS Code. So we are we can bring that to the cloud. Yeah. So the recently added debug support, if I go back to the test and let's have a look, then maybe I can set a breakpoint here and I can easily start a configuration for the debugger just by hitting run. And now it stops at that breakpoint. It shows me the debug console with all the output up to that uh, line. And I can inspect its state by uh, accessing the uh, objects in that scope. Yeah, right. So. Oops, to go further. Okay, um, that was for the demo. Um, I'd like to um, introduce you to some architectural aspects of, of FIA in order to explain how it's possible that we can run the same application in the browser as well as uh, on the desktop. So we have actually two parts uh, inside the FIA application. It's the front end and the back end and they are and they communicate um, a JSON RPC protocol um, over a WebSocket so that uh, we have seamlessly calls from one part to the other. And on the back end, we have that file system actually available. So we can inspect contents of files by accessing it um, via JSON RPC. So that's how we can actually um, open up content in front end. There are different modes how to run and deploy a, an application, um, a fee application that is, uh, for instance, in, in Docker container where we can um, um, deploy it to the cloud and the front end will be uh, running in the um, browser. And alternatively, there's, um, thanks to Electron, a way to put everything into the desktop so the front end is running in the Chromium browser, which is integrated. And the record is also running as part of this process tree inside the Electron application. So next I wanna explain you how actually this front end and back end uh, applications are yeah, con configured and what they consist of. So, we call them FIA extensions, and the, the whole application consists of like a set of extensions. And this is quite comparable to what you know from Eclipse because it's also a set of um, Eclipse plugins, which then actually is the application you're running. So in Eclipse case, you have those descriptors like manifest MF and plugin XML. One is for the runtime, the other is what you want to contribute to the application and what can be contributed to your um, plugin. And in case of E4, which actually is under the hood of each IDE currently, um, there you have also this application model which provides you with um, a dependency injection framework. So that's the new technology stack um, for Eclipse. And in FIA we have something quite similar um, there's a descriptor called package JSON, which is there because each um, FIA extension is NPM package. And we are describing there what kind of extension modules are exported by um, an extension. So those extension modules define like, bindings um, of identifiers like an interface to something which implements those interfaces. And um, we use a library called Inversify.js for dependency injection and containers. 
and the application, or both applications, the front and the back end application, has its own container. And all those modules will be loaded into that container. And in the end, everything in, in a fee application is wired together by dependency injection. So an interesting aspect of, of Eclipse plugin is that they, they can be uh, loaded lazily, right? They have these descriptors, so the system knows what's, uh, what's provided by them, and only if that's needed, they're gonna be loaded, right? Um, in Thea, we don't have the lazy loading on that level, which means that the modules will gonna be loaded on startup, but the things are gonna be instantiated only on demand. Um, both um, both um, types of pl the uh, Eclipse plugin and the FIA extension uh, can customize actually the application. So by doing uh, customization plugin in Eclipse or um, writing um, overriding code in, uh, in FIA. The risk of both systems is also that, uh, that a bad um, extension or bad plugin can actually like crash the whole application or freeze the whole application. We've, we've been there, we've seen that one uh, bad um, installation caused um, a freeze of, of Eclipse ID, and that potentially can also happen with FIA applications as well. Okay, let's have a quick look at what are, or how can extension points and contribution points, which is a counterpart in the FIA world, um, be defined. And I don't want to go into detail, I just want to show you how the artifacts look like, how, com how the complexity of this artifact looks like. So in case of FIA, it's just defining some, some interface in TypeScript code. And in case of Eclipse, for extension points, you actually need to define these XML schema definitions. Um, and the extensions which you then gonna be contributing or the contribution in case of FIA, that also looks a bit different. It's the code only um, approach in, uh, in FIA case and for Eclipse you again need to define something in the plugin XML and implement it in code, right? Okay, another um, topic is um, how are you using tools, how are you integrating tools for your development, right? Um, so in case of uh, Eclipse, we got used to use wizards and there's a really nice framework which let you design and, and uh, create frameworks. And if you look at the uh, new uh, menu, there are a lot of entries and then go into the um, dialogue, there's a whole bunch of, of wizards to create structure folders for different projects, right? Um, for FIA, there's no such thing. It's mainly because, you know, from coming from that web development um, um, projects, they don't use it, basically. They're, the tools are changing so rapidly that it's not possible to catch up with fancy um, wizards. So CLI tools are used and if you do need scaffolding, you can use generators, for instance, for FIA extensions or FIA plugins. Uh, you can call a generator to provide the scaffold of the whole project. And for the um, yeah, user, for, from the user perspective, if it's nice to have something being hooked up in the um, user interface, you can um, create so-called tasks and they will be provided via menu. So I want to mention some challenges which both extension system um, have. It's basically the dependency um, uh, issue. So dependency resolution is super hard for both um, for both systems, and it's caused by uh, dependencies between extensions or between plugins, right? And um, if there, there's a mismatch or something going on, then you probably can't install it, or in case of fear, you end up with a system with a behavior, you don't know why it's happened like that. And, and it also can cause issues if you have like incompatible common dependencies and it cannot be satisfied and, right. 
So, can we do something about that? Are there any alternatives? Right? And I want to show you this quote. It's from Eric Gama. It's a person who is well known in the Eclipse community. Right? He was kind of responsible for the Java developer development tools. And it's from an, um, an interview he gave in 2016. And he said, we took, a, we took it a step further with the isolation of extensions to prevent the IDE from being harmed. And what he was referring to were actually the VS Code extensions, which are running in isolated processes. But then they can talk to some host part within the main process. So this way, all that communication and all this interaction remains asynchronous. And if you do it right on the front end, you, you will always have a quite responsive um, UI and a good user experience. And yeah, eventually, on, on a crash of any extension, it does not crash your entire application. That's the biggest advantage, advantage maybe. So it can even try uh, to restart uh, a failed um, ex extension. And what we are doing now in FIA, and thanks to the uh, great contribution by Red Hat, uh, we are introducing FIA plugins, which are designed after the very VS Code extensions. So there is a plugin host, and um, the plugins are talking JSON RPC uh, with the host, and um, and all this this kind of generic concept is, I think, called um, tool server. So it's um, outsourcing of the tool, but still getting uh, in touch with that and managing is quite easily. If it's not responding, we can just spawn a new version. So for the FIA plugins, it's still kind of development in progress because we eventually want to implement the um, VS Code API because we might end up uh, supporting uh, running of uh, VS Code extensions within FIA. So what, how is it actually different to um, FIA extensions? When to choose uh, what? And um, I would say that FIA extensions are there to stay because they are great uh, to develop IDEs itself. So you can easily um, yeah, customize your own application to, to your needs. And you can tailor everything, you can customize everything. But you then like, need to maintain it, right? And FIA plugins provide a, a really nice way to, to change between feature sets, maybe. And they also provide this plug and play experience where you can just easily load um, any uh, plugin you want and maybe unload it on if you don't want it, I don't know. Um, yeah. So um, I think that's it for the content part. <laughs> I thank you for uh, attending. And if you have any questions, please. Um, I'm here to try to answer them. Hi. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, how does uh, fear relate to um, Eclipse J? Um, so I think that was also the motivation why Red Hat joined um, the development of fear because they want to use fear, a fear application, yeah, right, built with the fear framework. Um, in order to run within Che. And their also goal was to support such plugins so that they can dynamically maybe create a set of features demanding on what their projects may be required.
Yeah, well, the question is about um, whether it will be eventually possible to have something like this workspace abstraction with projects and, 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 and such within FIA. So the thing is, we currently all, almost support the multi-root project. I actually don't know what the state of that feature is, of that contribution. It's maybe not yet fully there, but it will end up that you can include different locations into your workspace. So in that workspace, uh, can then uh, like include different routes mapped to different location, but it doesn't actually answer uh, your question about the the project itself. So from the perspective of LSP, it's just a location in a file system is called workspace, right? So and that is what's going to be observed. So I think it's up to the um, it's up to the uh, language server to to manage those projects. I'm not aware of any like feature requests to actually mimic that uh, projects inside the UI, but the language server should support those artifacts, those project artifacts. For instance, the JDT language server does that. Mm -hmm. So there is no lazy um, loading mechanism for the FIA um, extensions. There is like an, um, a natural or um, by design lazy loading um, functionality for the FIA plugins actually. So those can be um, loaded lazy that they can potentially be restarted, right? But for FIA extensions, so we haven't observed any issues with um, installing like a lot of extensions into the application because the lazy loading part is just like postponed to the object creation phase. So the objects are created later on and thanks to the JavaScript runtime, at least on, on uh, the backend, we don't see any uh, issues with dynamic loading modules. Um, I, yeah, the, the question is about whether that uh, FIA backend could potentially run on embedded devices like Raspberry Pi, right? Um, I've seen some issues on, on GitHub, but I'm not aware of any like uh, solution I could point you to. If uh, I, I hear that there, there was a solution done, right? So that's possible, right? Yeah, we've seen that in the talk here from Eclipse also ah. and then on Raspberry Pi. Cool. In combination with the JDT learning server and LDT, so it's actually quite a load of that Raspberry Pi, but it's not easy. Oh, cool. Okay, if there are no questions, thank you very much.